This is the best illustration I could create for the biggest misunderstanding about bass and low end between music producers. It ruins countless mixes and creates so much confusion. You can see me starting the waves from different sides. One wave started from top and other started from the bottom, meaning that their faces are flipped. At this start, we can see two waves clearly approaching to each other. This is right before waves connect. But then something super interesting happens. If we freeze the frame right this second, for the observer, there are no waves, no movement apart from the vibrations. This happens due to waves having opposite phases. When they are on top of each other, they cancel each other. Because the directions are opposite, they continue forward. But if they were in the same directions, we would indeed see silence here. This is extremely simple to recreate in digital world. Let's take two sine waves and flip the phase of the second sine wave. While we are able to hear each sine wave separately, when we play them together, sound disappears. This happens because we summed up these two signals into one channel, so they just cancelled each other out. Look what happens now when I start panning each channel left and right. We start to hear the signal again and it gets stereo. And something very strange happens when I take two sine waves with the same exact phase correlation. It stays right in the middle. This means without altering the waveform, you can actually create a stereo signal by changing the phases of the signals or changing the amplitude difference of the signals. But what if we have more than two signals? Let's say two right and two left. Phasing can happen inside the channel itself or between the channels. So anytime you sum up two signals, there is a possibility of phasing. And phasing will be especially a problem if the signals have similar frequency response. Let's go back to misunderstanding. The heart of electric dance music is the low end, the bass, and you want your heart to be strong. And especially in the low end, making the bass mono would most of the time sound much tighter. Let's take a look at this example. I have this really cool Reese bass over here. Because we are using unison, meaning multiple oscillators phasing in and out each other, we are seeing these volume variations all the time. So let's try that mono option and see if it solves our problem. If anything, we lost the stereo image and it sounds worse now. But let's try that bass mono option. Again, we had the same issue. The reason this happens is because we didn't solve the issue, we just made it visible. The source of the problem, the oscillators coming in and out of phase, is still there. And that has to be fixed if you want to control the volume levels or have less phasing issues. There are two solutions for this one. And the first one is called soft solution and the second one is called hard solution. In the soft solution, let's say our signal is going up and down and we want to somehow stabilize this one. The solution, let's say it is how my volumes look like over time. If you put a limit or compressor on top of this. Let's say this is top threshold and this is the bottom threshold and your signal will never be able to go over or under. This is called soft solution because you are not changing the original signal but you are trying to stabilize it by using extra processing. The harsh solution focuses on the problem itself. One of the classic examples is let's say we have a signal again going like this. So we can separate this signal into the two. Maybe one high signal and the one for sub frequencies. Then what happens is that we can keep the high signal, but we can replace the low end with a more stable signal. A super simple example will be taking this and maybe putting a high pass filter like this and a low pass filter like this. This means that this part we can keep and this part we can replace. We can pick a more stable sub end and then we keep the top part intact, but overall dynamic range now will be much less. If you are enjoying the video up to now, please consider like and subscribe. Let's fix the problem in soft phase. So remember, in soft phase we want to keep the original signal, nothing changes, but we want to control the dynamics. Obviously we have a problem over here. I'm just gonna pick a glue compressor. We just bring down the threshold so that we start to grab the signal. Bring attack and release so that we can react fast. And if you increase the ratio, it will correct even more. And then you just adjust your gain, right? We were here and with just a simple compression, we are here. Now there is one single issue. We have stabilized the signal in stereo. That means that we haven't actually fixed it in mono. Look what happens when I just collapse into mono afterwards. 
problem is right back. So what you oftentimes should do if you want to secure your low and compatibility, just move the utility before your compression. You can either go full mono and then compress. Now everything is mono, but you can also do it base mono now. Like take this off, click on base mono. And now if you go here and do the space mono again, you will see that signal is much more stable. And even if you do complete total collapse, we still have a much more stable signal. There are many other compressors that help you do target specific area. You can actually take something like a prime B and just compress the area that you want to do. It really depends what you want to use. But let's say you don't want to do anything with the top range, but you just want to compress the low end and keep the highs as it is. The simplest solution for this one will be just taking something like EQ3 and then pick where you split the signal. Let's say I'm going to split around 134 Hz. doesn't matter. That is the low and that I want to compress. What you need to do, Ctrl G, duplicate one more time. And the first one will be the low end. I'm going to turn off mid and highs. And the second one will be high end. So I'm going to turn this off. So this one will be only highs. And this one will be lows. Right? Now that means that I can import all these chain that we had, utility on mono and then glue compression on top. I'm now only compressing the low end. And then together with the high end, if you take a look at the imager now, we will see that lows are pretty mono and stable. Highs, on the other hand, going around, giving us that stereo feel we want to go. Now, hard solution. In the hard solution, we are very serious about making low and super tight. So we want everything super stable and mono. There are two ways to do it. I'm gonna start with the clutch way that I like to do lately. The same sound we have over here. Some of the wavetable synthesizer actually lets you manually remove from the mantle. This is the top base. If you go here, Presses, remove fundamental, bam. Take a look at that. That sub over here disappeared. But that means that you can then go to your serum and you pick something like a simple sine wave, very, very stable. And then once you combine them, you have a very stable low end, but very fancy restone in this case. Now there is also old school way of doing this one, manually with the high pass and low pass filters. Just take an EQ, any EQ will do. High pass manually from where you want. Now there is one thing I should mention, it will make things a bit more confusing, but when you high pass things, you are also altering the phase of the original signal. Now this is a raised base, so there are a lot of oscillations in it, so it wouldn't matter that much, but more clear the signal, you may actually want to use something like ozone tan imager. Ozone imager will split from the band that you like, but it will still keep the phase correlation intact. That's all you do here. And then you duplicate it one more time. And then you create the same chain at the base that you want to have more stable, of course. And then all you need to do, pick that splitter that you use. In the case you are using EQ, you just go to high pass here and turn it onto the low pass, right? And now you can just blend them together. The signal become much more stable again. If you really want to go deep into the mixing and the low end mixing especially, I have two separate courses on mercurial tones.com. But if you want to stay in YouTube and learn more, I also have a video over here. Take a look.